welcome to the Snowy's Camping Show. How are you, Ben? Got to get in front of my mic. Yeah, got it. Thank you. How good. are you? Yeah, good. We're um, chugging along nicely. Coming up to Easter, looking forward to lots chugging of chocolate. Along. You're about to go away. Well, I think by the oh, time this – You will have been. Well, I think by the time uh, – I think when this episode is published, this is the day that I get back. Okay. Um, and you will probably see me crawling up the stairs. If if I haven't, you're borrowing my PLB, so it's provided I haven't had a call from AMSA saying <laughs> you are you're, my emergency are you contact. In a, are you Thanks, in an emergency buddy. situation? And I can go. Well, I'm not, but I know someone who probably is. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe uh, call their mum. Hang on a sec. <laughs> yes, I've stubbed my toe. <laughs> no. Um, Absolutely. Um, Anyway, so let's get into the actual episode. So um, we've got another shorter episode for you today. And I know that some of our listeners um, do love the longer episodes, which never, never fear. We've got quite a a few interviews up our sleeves coming in the very, very near future, which we're really excited about. Um, Doing these shorter ones allows us more time to plan for the Bigger the bigger ones, ones to be better so yeah. we can fill this and look, in with the, re- the questions. reality is that our videographers had some leave. Um, you've had a little bit of leave. I'm now, as of today, back of not this recording day but the day that we're live, future, I'm future, back Lauren. from my leave. So, you know, it's great for us to have a bit of work-life balance and still be able to bring you these great conversations. Um so bear, bear with us if there's a couple of shorter ones strung together and you're like, no, it's not enough yep. um, because it will be enough soon, I promise. So we are doing uh, another question episode today. Um, our For last which- question episode was a listener episode. Yep. Um, and so if you do submit a question to us via our Facebook group or even here on YouTube and we use your question for the episode, you will uh, get a stubby holder and a sticker in the post. As displayed in front As of us As displayed here. here rather lovingly with Ben's merchandising talents yep. on our um, desk here. If you're watching us, if you're not, sorry, you'll just have to go with um, my riveting There's description. Three, three stubby callers, four, one on its side and a stack of stickers. So. Oh, you should. Riveting detail. Yeah, I'll do this. There's stick a few in here, one. but you should pull this because I think I pulled last time. Um. That's the one we did last week. Why is that one I back in there? <laughs> Freaking hell. <laughs> Here we go. Chuck that one out. <laughs> to make, it, make its way back in there. Yeah. Uh, so this one, this is obviously one before we started putting names to it. We don't have a name against this one. So no one gets a stubby caller this week, mm. uh, hopefully next time. Uh, but what size solar panel? Really broad question, but a good one. Right. So I reckon um, – this is one that got put in because the, the stores give us, um, hey, this is questions we get asked all the time by in-store customers as well um, and we get obviously with customer support as well. And I think a really common question is I want, you know, we've addressed um, what size battery do I need for my fridge, right? Mm-hmm. But then we also get, okay, well, I want an off-grid system and I've got this battery already or I want to buy this power station. What size solar panel do I need? Um, and that's a really great question. And I would probably preface it if I was going to be like, oh, we just need a one line answer. I'd be like 200 Watts. Yeah. It's creeping up into the 300 Watts with some now, but that's okay. Yeah. As much as you can afford, but aim for at least 200 Watts. Yeah. I've got a 200 Watt panel. I run pretty lightly, but that's running a fridge and charging a bones and, and that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, and with good sun, it's more than what I need. More than enough. And that's yep. the thing. I think um, that 200 watts is a really good staple because even if you're just starting out, you will have more than enough. But if you want to build over the next couple of years, maybe you haven't got a fridge yet, you just want a battery to power lights or uh, accessories or whatever, or you've got a small fridge and maybe you want to upgrade to a bigger fridge at some point or whatever, a, a 200 watt panel is a good one that will still cover your needs through mm-hmm. a fair period of growth in your camping setup, I would say. Yeah, it- it's also important that you look at 200 watts on a sunny day. Now that will charge my fridge, uh, run my fridge and charge my batteries on a sunny day. Yeah. No problems at all. The issue comes on a not so sunny day mm. where a 200 watt panel is still going to be giving a reasonable amount of 
amps you, you have to run a, a fridge. You, your array is much larger. That's right, yeah. yeah. You never really get, I think mine's rated at 11 amps and that's in absolute perfect conditions, yeah. which never happens. I think I've seen it maybe creep up to 10 once, but yeah. generally between – Six and nine amps mm-hmm. is fairly good because, mm. you know, you change the angle a little bit, the amps go up by yep. one, down by one. So as the sun moves yep. throughout the day, you get an average. So that 200 watts, I'll put that in the sun in the morning with my fridge running, it's hot in the car. Yeah. It'll keep the stuff in the fridge cold, running all day. Yeah. And it'll charge my batteries. Yeah. If it's an overcast day, those amps might drop down to three or four, but that's still enough to keep the fridge running at yeah. least to maybe charge some batteries. If I've only got a hundred watt panel, those amps are probably going to drop down to one or two maybe. Mm. Now I'm talking not quite enough to run the fridge and it's going to draw from the battery. Yep. So if you get a bigger panel, it gives you a larger array, like you said, of of amps across a wider range of conditions. Mm. I think, you know, bearing in mind as well that this is also very much a, a, a black and white answer. And it's not going to apply to everybody because, of course, then there will be limitations of what solar panel you can use with if you're using a power station, for example, which is like an all-in-one battery. It has a built-in uh, solar regulator mm-hmm. or charge regulator. You would need to match your solar panel with the specifications of your charge regulator. Mm-hmm. If you're just using a standard battery, it isn't a built-in, doesn't have a BMS with a built-in solar charger and and whatever, a charge regulator as well, then you're a little bit more flexible because you would then tend to buy a solar panel that is in combination with a solar charger. You know, you'll buy them as a matched partnership. Or if you want to buy them individually, you're making sure you're buying that charge regulator that's going to match your solar panel. Mm -hmm. So in the past, there's been a bit of a sort of content, well, not contentious issue, I guess, but a bit of a debate around um, whether or not there's a problem with plugging a solar panel in that's significantly larger than the charge regulator capacity that you've got. So they have an amp. Rating yes. For example, for you might have a solar controller, like for the Rovers, right? The older Rovers, they had a built-in solar controller that I'm pretty sure was rated at five amps mm-hmm. max. So it seemed a little bit hit and miss because some charge regulators that you purchase, if you were to charge, say, a 200-watt panel that has a max output of, say, 11 amps, into a solar controller that's capacity is five amps, you'd melt the controller. Yeah. Because essentially you've got a panel that's trying to force almost double yep. the capacity of the 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 hardware and the components and the, the electrical mm. components and wiring of that charger. It'll, it'll melt, right? There might be some controllers who can are smart But then there that. are other ones that are potentially a little bit smart that – We'll just cut it off yeah. and therefore you'll get no charge at all. Or it will only allow. But at the same time, the solar panels are still, as if, if your solar panels are still connected, that solar panel is still trying to generate current, but you've got your little solar charger stopping that current going in. So that has to go somewhere. So they must have a massive heat sink built into it or something, I mm. don't know, that protects that. But realistically at the end of the day, if you have a solar controller that, says it's rated to 10 amps max, you're probably wanting to look at a solar panel that's not going to be putting out much more than 11 to 12 amps max, you know, like you wouldn't want to be plugging anything in that exceeds that too mm. much. Getting and in so, mind that if you might, people now are probably going, hang on, you said plug 11 amps into 10 amps, but that's because that panel is rated at 11 amps, but for the most part, it's never going to give 11 amps. It's for the most part, yeah. Eight or nine. And I think- like without trying to get too confusing, it's like if the maximum is 10 amps, a little bit over that isn't that big a deal. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? It's like yep. even though the charge regulator won't be a letting more than 10 amps in, if it's trying to push a little bit more than that in, that's only a little bit of extra heat. You know, yep. that's just a little bit of extra load. Whereas if it's trying to push three, four, five plus more amps in, that's a lot more. Yep. So it comes down to that sort of componentry in there. But again, it's it's checking whether or not the regulator that you've got has the ability to counteract that or not. Yeah. 
But then you also have the other question of, well, some people go with a, say, for example, the current, the current Rover 500s, they have a five amp, 150 watt max input. And so some people are like, well, if I got a 200 watt solar panel, even though the potential output of that panel is 11 amps, in the middle of winter, I want to maximize my output. So I'm going to go with a 200 watt anyway, because I'm probably only going to be generating five amps, six amps. Whereas if I bought a 150 watt solar panel, I might only be getting two or three amps Mm -hmm. from that in the middle of winter. And it's like, cool, that theory makes sense, right? In theory, that all works great. But then in the middle of summer, when your solar panel is making seven, eight, nine amps all the time, you just won't be charging because it's going to cut off. Does it cut off? I haven't looked at the new ones. Does it cut off or does it just limit it? Look, I don't know about the new ones. I'm just going with the old ones. So okay. I'm assuming that it's the, that it's the same yep. in that it just cuts off. So this is- Because uh, I don't, I yeah. mean, I, I'm happy to be wrong here because I'm, I'm, you know, I have family and lots of members that, you know, people that I know that are electricians it and have a lot to do with 12 volt, but I'm also not an expert. So I'm mm. totally happy to be wrong, but I've not yet come across a charge regulator that throttles. Okay. I haven't delved into the if new If there companion. is one, please let me know because that'd be cool, but I haven't come across one that actually throttles power. I haven't looked into the new companion rovers. I've had a look at them but I haven't looked at the details. But the important thing here, I suppose, is to have a look at, uh, there's a lot of it depends. Have a look at the solar controller, what it's capable of. Will it cut off? Will it just limit? Um, it also begs the question of like, well, can I put uh, two 200-watt panels into my, uh, let me take a step back. I've got a 200-watt solar panel with an older PWM 15-amp controller on it. It's 11 yep. amp, 11.6 amps or something is what the panel's rated at. So 15-amp solar controller is fine. I could put two... 200 watt solar panels into that if I wanted. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that PWM controller cuts out. It uh, depends how you it, connect them, I think. Can, if you're doing it in parallel or series, if you're doubling your voltage or yeah. your amps. Yeah, good one. But if I'm trying to double the amps, so mm-hmm. I've got more storage, um, it might go over that 15 amps. But I, ideally what I would then do is upgrade my solar controller to hardcore do a 30 amp one. Yeah. So I'm now within that limitation and I can – now feed two 200 watt panels into a solar controller and then plug that into my mm. fridge. So I'm now getting on a hot day, uh, on a cold day, sorry, I might be getting three or four amps per panel. So I'm yeah. now getting six amps and this is never exact maths. This yeah. is rough maths. I'm now getting more into my fridge mm. for longer. Yeah. Having more solar. So you can add more solar to it, but you need to have a look at that solar controller. We'll, we'll do videos on those rovers at some stage mm-hmm. uh, and look into what that, how that they deal with that five amp. Let's see if off. we can get um, companion on as well to maybe do an episode around the, those newer ones. That'd be good see one, what, yeah, because yeah. it's the amp, they have a built-in MPPT controller, mm. which delivers the best um, charge. Um, uh, what do you call it? Profile. Yeah. For the battery. Yeah. Um, but I I can't recall whether the old ones cut out or just limited. I thought they limited it, but. I'd have to go back yeah, and check I, again. I don't, like, as I've said multiple times, because I'm sure there are going to be people who are going to be like, oh, you dumbass, you don't know what you're talking about. Like I've said multiple times, I'm more than happy to be wrong. Yeah, me too. I do remember. I, I'm completely okay with that. I do remember having to I dig into this just years ago. Don't, I, I genuinely just don't believe I've come across one that throttles. And I, as I said, doesn't mean there isn't one. It's just that I don't recall ever coming across one that does that. Okay. But um, the other thing that I was going to say is that we did this whole, um, you know, what size battery do I need to run my fridge episode. So you also, the other side of that um, is that if you've got, say, a 100 amp hour battery, which is a lot, right, especially if it's lithium, you've got huge capacity there, you know, you, you're laughing. Um. Wanting to know if your solar panel is going to do the job in keeping your battery topped up is a little bit the same as what we talked about in that episode in the sense that if you know that your fridge is pulling three amps an hour, then the size solar panel that you want, ideally during daylight hours, you're going to want that to be putting more than three amps in 
Mm -hmm. so that when there's no sun, you know that your battery has replenished everything that it's given your fridge during the day. Mm -hmm. So that's the other thing to look at. If you're getting a 200 watt panel, on average, they're going to be around about that 11, 12 max output, Mm -hmm. which means that you're going to be getting throughout the year anywhere between six to 10 amps on average, I would say. Um, In full sun. In You know, yeah, in full sun uh, over the course of the year. Then, of course, you're going to be laughing because you're going to more than happily replenish with even six amps. You're going to replenish the three amps that's being taken out. So it's sort of just like doing a bit of math, a bit of a plus and minus. If I'm taking this out, what am I putting back in? So just buy as much solar as you can afford. Yeah. Aim, aim for 200. The companion Which got also is like, now. but also at the same time, don't because it might be unnecessary. That's, you know, that's the other thing that, that I'm sort of, you know, if you, but my, mind you though, like you say, you can upgrade to a 30 amp MPPT solar controller. Yeah in your system and have as much solar as you want. You could add solar later if you wanted. Think but, but the limitation comes with those all-in-one power stations where your only option is to plug and play, which is great, yeah. but you can't change the internal configuration. I think they're great for shorter trips, weekends away and that sort of thing. But if you're looking for a, a four-drive setup, then having yeah. that capability to switch solar controllers in and out, get an actual um, uh, a, um, DC-DC thing in your car, that makes it much more, much better to manage and increase and decrease your solar. But then you start talking a lot of dollars. Whereas these plug and play things, they're a lot of dollars, but you kind of you can set it up straight up without quite as much as all the components for a vehicle setup. Yeah. But um, yeah, two hundred watts. If you're running a fridge, camping, hot weather, two hundred watts is gonna be a pretty good size if you can afford that. Hardcore yeah. do a good one. Yeah. Companion have got some new ones out now. Don't have any field experience with them yet, but they look like really neat units. Yeah. They don't come with a controller though. So either you need to plug it straight into the Rovers or um, buy a solar controller. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that can be sometimes um, the companion, obviously companion make the Rovers. So if you are getting a Rover, it might just be a really easy and simple thing for you to do to just look at a companion solar panel Mm -hmm. because you know it's pretty much just going to be plug and play. Which is why I think they probably do throttle it because they sell a 300 watt solar panel for the Rover. Yes, but Systems. also don't forget how many, like how many different sizes the Rover has. Mm. So I reckon, do, isn't there 1,500 or something in the bigger one? It's not a range I've dug into in a deep way yet. Yeah. We're pretty much just working things out live on, well, not live, semi-live. Well, it is because, you, you know, we even though we know what questions are in there because we're the ones who sort of put them in, we don't know what question yeah. we're getting out on the episode. So bit, it is a bit on the fly. There's a lot of conversations like this that happen in the office where we mm. go, what do you think about these? What does this mean? What questions do we need to ask the suppliers? So this yeah. might prompt all of these questions if you've got it. We, I've actually got a bunch in the back of my mind that mm. will be asked of the supplier yeah. when we do the videos or before we do the video so we can mm. answer these questions if you've yeah. got any too then please let us know yeah cool thanks guys well, we're down. thanks for watching that was a long short episode a long short episode we will catch you next time see ya